Well, good morning. Welcome to Coffee with the Pastor. Uh, very exciting passage we have today. It's Genesis 22. It's where God asked Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac. God comes to Abraham and he says, I want you to sacrifice your son, your only son. Well, we know Ishmael's around, but the son of the promise, your only son, your only begotten son, I want you to take him. Take him to Mount Moriah. I want you to sacrifice him there. And what's interesting is Abraham just does it. Seems like when God comes and calls Abraham to do something, he just does it. When he called him to leave Ur, go to the promised land, he did. When he told him to leave his family, he just did. Uh, Abraham just obeyed God. That's one of the things that you just see about him that he does. So he gets his servants, and apparently they're a few days away, and they, they travel to, to, to the mountain. And he has servants with him, and he tells the servants, you stay here, and the boy and I are going to go up on, on the mountain. Uh, I grew up imagining, with the interpretation of the boy, that Isaac was a child. Um, I have since changed my mind. In fact, the question would be, how old was Isaac? Uh, I know some people who think that he might have been 37 years old. And the reason I say that is in the next uh, uh, chapter, we're going to see the death of Sarah. She's 127. She was 90 when he was, when he was born. And they're going to deduce something. I think that maybe you can't deduce, but, but they do. They suggest that Sarah finds out what happened up on that mountain. She dies from it. And that would make Isaac 37 years old. And uh, I have my doubts about that. But let's just look at the Hebrew word. This is what it looks like in, in Hebrew. It is ne'er, is how you pronounce it. I'll put the pronunciation up, it's ne'er. And this is how it is uh, defined with the Hebrew text. It can stand for a boy, an adolescent, or a young man. So getting Isaac, thinking about him being a young child, uh, get that out of your mind. He was probably a, at least a teenager and maybe even more probably a young man. I mean, they've, they've uh, really, I think instead of boy, lad would have been a good translation for that. Uh, you could have translated he was an adolescent. You could translate it he was a young man. We're not sure how old Isaac was, but he was old enough that he would have had to have willingly participated in that. Now, you remember the conversation going up on the mount. Isaac asks, well, Father, we have the, the uh, wood and we have the fire, you know, but we don't, and the, and the knives, but where's the, the lamb we're going to sacrifice? And Abraham said, God will provide. Now, it's, it, that's very provi providential, but at the time, I believe, God was going to, I mean, Abraham thought God wanted him to sacrifice Isaac. So they get up there, and he ties Isaac, builds an altar, ties Isaac to it, and uh, he gets ready to kill Isaac. Now, the thing about it is, if Isaac is an adolescent or a young man, as I believe he is, and as I believe that the text teaches that he is, he would have had to participate with it because uh, he could have certainly run away from a 110, 120-year-old man. That wouldn't have been hard for him. So I think Isaac's part in this needs to be uh, looked at as well. The Bible teaches that uh, Abraham raises his arm and then a voice from heaven calls from him, don't do the boy any harm. And then there's a ram in the thicket over there. He sacrifices the ram instead. And he calls the place Jehovah Jireh, uh, God will provide. Uh, a powerful story. 
uh, I remember when I was a youth minister at a young age, there was a guy in our church who had a young boy. And there was one night he had read this story and it just bothered him. And, and he really did some spiritual struggling with it. And just prayed, Lord, would I, if you asked me to sacrifice my son, would I be willing to? And he just did a lot of, a lot of, Sacrifice, and he told me about it. He said, you know, I don't know if I would be able to or not. And I looked at him and I said, well, there's good news. You don't have to. Uh, because God sacrificed his son so that you wouldn't have to sacrifice yours. Uh, you know, Jesus died for our sins. And uh, it's very significant. Uh, a couple of things that has been pointed out to me that I kind of want to point out to you now, Abraham leaves his servants there, and they go up on the mount, and he says, we'll be back. Well, what's interesting is, is Abraham does come back. Isaac does not. And a lot of people have suggested that Isaac goes down on the other side of the mountain, and that... Uh, this really did put a, a difficulty between Abraham and Isaac. The Bible doesn't teach that they ever spoke again. Now, I don't know if we make too much of that, but uh, it wouldn't be at all. Uh, it could very well be that, that uh, they, they struggled <laughs> as a result of, of, of what happened here. Uh, the other thing is, is that where this took place is modern day Jerusalem now. And they think maybe around where the Temple Mount is. Uh, it also put into practice uh, the sacrificial system. When Moses was given the law, the Torah, up on Mount Sinai, Sinai uh, he uh, was given all these how to, how to sacrifice, how to, what to sacrifice like that. And that can be kind of traced back to this time uh, that instead of sacrificing his son, he needed a substitute. And that's what the sacrificial system is all based upon, is it, it is substituted. And it is also a picture of what God is going to do for us even though God would not allow Abraham to kill his own son. God allows his son to be crucified for our sins. And so it is in our place. Like the ram was in the place of Isaac, sacrificial system, you have to bring the ram to, have to be sacrificed in your place. God has sent his son to sacrifice his sin in your place. That's why it's never... It, it, our salvation was bought at a great price. It was just bought at a great price. It cost God everything. And when we don't live for him and when we sin, it really flies in the face of that gift uh, that Jesus had to die on the cross for our sins. And we need to think about that and consider this, this great passage here, very powerful passage. And I hope you'll go today understanding that God has provided for your sins. God will provide Jehovah Jireh. And he'll, he has provided for you through Jesus Christ. Well, have a blessed day. We'll continue looking, going through Genesis. We'll be in Genesis 23 tomorrow if you want to read ahead. And blessings to you today. Have a great day.